All right, everyone. So for today's second class meeting, uh, if we look at our agenda in the syllabus, page two, we have several things that we're going to talk about. Specifically, last time, one of the last things that we were doing that took us a little while to do and was rather complicated was setting up the child themes. But we talked about how important it is to have child themes, especially for updates. When you update your 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 core WordPress or or themes, any any customization you've done to the WordPress uh, page or theme gets removed, gets deleted when you do that upgrade. So it's important to do that. We'll do it again because I, I saw we were struggling with it. It is a complicated thing, <laughs> but remember I've got it all recorded on the videos, and we'll have time to do questions and answers. So we've got to set our we've got to set ourselves up again, like we do every week in this room, where uh, we need to set up our WordPress. Uh, so we'll go through the steps again together. Uh, so we want to, we, on your desktop, you want to double-click your WAMP server icon. That's our foundation. So double-click it. Remember, there's no big splash screen that says, congratulations, you're, you're in WAMP server. It goes to the bottom right corner on the little double arrow. Mine, my interface looks a little bit different. I don't have the plain one that you guys have. Uh, but you should see it too. Uh, you see a little double arrow at the bottom right near the near the time at the bottom right, and then you'll see the green W. If you've got a yellow W or a red W, that's not so good. Raise your hand. I'll help you out in a moment. But let me do the lecture first. But here on the green W, you want to click it, left click, and select localhost. Remember, that opens up our default web browser and takes you to the address http colon slash slash localhost. Localhost is where we access our, our WAMP server settings. You can always get back to it if you don't want to click on that green icon. You can always go back to it by going to the address http colon slash slash localhost. And what we want to do is open up the phpMyAdmin screen to create the database. We have to do that every time, create a database, but then we'll resurrect the site from last week. And remember, you can click on the icon or on the, on the link down here for PHP My Admin, but for practice, let's do it by typing the actual address. Because sometimes you don't have this screen that guides you, but you always have the ability to type the address directly. For example, localhost takes you to the WAMP server home screen. And now up on the address, let's type localhost slash php my admin capitalization does not matter and that's the same as if we click on the icon down here to, to open PHP my admin let's go to that address type it and press enter and that'll take us to our WAMP server our, I mean, I, my, our PHP my admin administration screen where we spent a lot of time last time talking about everything that's here. This is where the database is stored. This is where the, the, the soul of your WordPress site is situated. Um, so at the top, we'll select databases. I'm going to create a database. Uh, last time we called this uh, WP4. We'll just follow that as well. The database can be any called anything you want. Now, one thing that I noticed when we were poking around last time, and I see a preview of it here, these are the databases currently existing. For some reason, when we created our databases last week, and I guess every day we've had this class, since we never changed this option of collation, it seemed to be creating our database in Swedish, <laughs> which I was, we weren't having any problems, but that's kind of weird. We should have this in, in, in a more uh, non-Swedish language. So uh, this is where we can set that. Collation, it's basically sort of what language are you going to set your database in? And I, as I said, we have not had problems all of this time that we had the previous class and this class. So. I suppose we can leave it alone, but here's what I would recommend. Uh, we want, under collation, these are the possible languages that we can set up our database as. Uh, so we want to find a specific one. Let me find it and I'll tell you where it's at. 
Um, there's all of these languages that we can set ourselves up as. Alright, so what we're going to go with is there's a set of languages down at the very bottom under a section called UTF-8. UTF-8 is, um, is a way to encode um, our, uh, our languages. Uh, and um, the specific one that I want is here under UTF-8 General. So scroll near the bottom, 75% uh, near the bottom. You'll see UTF-8 and then UTF-8 General CI. I'm not sure what the CI stands for, but General. Since I don't see English, I see Esperanto and other languages, but General should work. That's what I see as examples that have already existed here. These are the information schema and performance schema, our default WordPress databases, I'm sorry, default phpMyAdmin databases, and they're listed as that, so I'll go with that. Swedish doesn't make sense. <laughs> so name of our database here, and UTFA general. As I said, if you forget to do this next time, probably, we will probably be okay. I, we haven't seen any problems before. Yes? If uh, we don't change the uh, uh, General, mm -hmm. what is still working? It seems to still work. I, I don't know what's actually happening, but it seems to still work because I think Swedish has the letters of English in the alphabet as well as their own Swedish characters. So I guess we're fine. This one actually, general, UTFA general, should encompass all languages anyway, all most languages, Swedish included. So this should be our default. <coughs> Click create. That was our database, created the database, and now we need to get a copy of, of my site. Again, you can work with your own files, but I recommend work with my site so that we're all on the same page. And then whatever you learn, then apply it to your own projects. But we want a copy of my project, so let's uh, minimize and go to the desktop and open up computer. We've done this several times before. Open up computer, open up the network drive Z. Network drive Z, and then scroll down till you find the folder campus WordPress 2. Open campus WordPress 2. This is where all of the instructions are at that we're going to talk about in the class. You might want to get a copy of those at some point, just uh, from that folder, drag them to your desktop. And uh, specifically, what we want right now is the WordPress 2014-1003 folder. That's the work that we did last week. So I'm just going to drag from this folder to my desktop a copy. And I'll also copy over those those PDFs, and during the break times you can print those out if you want to have a piece of paper next to you as we do this work. Uh, so definitely copy the WordPress folder. Here it is on my desktop. You can then close that window. Okay. 
Okay, so did everyone uh, print their name on the sign-in sheet? Anyone need that? All right, so you've copied that folder to your desktop. Uh, let's rename that folder, actually. Technically, we could leave it with that name, but we should just rename it simply WordPress so that we can find it when we, uh, when we go to the folder. Actually, just to show you, this can be called anything. Let's call this WP4, just to be consistent with the name of our database. And make a note, the database does not need to be named the same thing that your folder is named. So if we were to call this my WP4, this would still work. It's just that our database and our folder, we've been keeping them the same name for consistency. I'm going to save that. So you want to rename that. Click on the click on the file name once so that it lets you rename it and then call that WP4. Okay, so then um, we need to copy or move that folder from this desktop into the WW folder in our WAMP folder. So I'm going to open another computer window. And this time we will go to the local disk C, the C drive. Local disk C, open that up. And then we'll see the WAMP folder. Open up WAMP. And then we see a www folder. Remember, any any uh, any any web uh, files that we put into this folder will then act like a website. We can go back to the web browser and do localhost slash you know, my site. Whatever projects we put in there that are proper web files, if we put them in that WW folder, they become like a website. So open up WW folder, and I'm going to drag my WP folder from the desktop into the WWW folder. See, it's going to move it in there. That's fine. So drag, a uh, drag it over, it's in the WW folder now. You can close this window and we'll go back to the web browser. Back to the web browser and we'll change our address. Delete that. We'll change our address now to http colon slash slash localhost slash wp4. That's the name of the project we just uploaded. Slash installer.php what we're looking at is the result of the duplicator plugin from last week compressing our site into this duplicator archive it, it froze it from last week and now we're going to resurrect it and so we need to access this installer.php file uh, within the WP folder so type that and press enter And you should get this duplicator screen. Does everyone see that? Anyone need some help? That's right. The folder that we just put into into the www folder is the wp4 folder. That's what we type.
All right, so we're all at this installer screen. Mm -hmm. All right, so what we're going to fill out here is um, we're going to leave the action alone. Host is going to be localhost. Name of the new or existing database we just created, WP4. The user to access PHP my admin as per my instructions is root and the password to access the database is empty so don't type anything in password to make sure if this worked click test connection and what should get is a couple of success items anyone get not not get success All right, so actually, good point. This screen is case sensitive, so if you type capital root, most likely it'll fail because that's a different user. Yep, fail. So you do want lower cases here. All right, so my connection worked. It found the database. So now we need to select at the bottom. I have read all the warnings. And select Run Deployment. Confirm this. Yes, click OK. It's just telling you again that what we are about to do is if there was already a database called WP4 and if it already had a website inside of it, we're about to erase it and put our own web website on top of it, our own database into it. That's why it wants to confirm. It wants what, to double uh, confirm. We, we did, uh, create the, the database before, right? You, is it been deleted? We created it last week, but remember, every time we come into this room, it erases everything that we did. Oh, no, I thought we made a different screen. Sorry. Yes. You want to have the database and then you have another website inside? Can you do that at that time? You should have one database per website, okay. but you can create multiple databases. But so, you, but for the database we started last week, we can't add another. No, not in this room, because remember, everything that we do gets erased. So that's why we have to do it. If you were doing this at home, you still couldn't do it or shouldn't do it. You, could, you shouldn't add one database of a new site into the same database of an old site. It's going to give you problems. So here, uh, we don't need to change anything, but this is the part where you can change if you want. The title of your site is called Victor's Bakery. You can call it John's Bakery if you want, or anything else but doesn't matter. I'm not going to change anything here. Select Run Update. And I remember uh, I've, I've been teaching this class a while and when we would always do this, the older version of this plugin would get to the screen and for some reason they decided to put the text here red always, even when you had no errors. So people right away would see something red and think, what's my problem? And it would say error zero, but it was red. So I thought, I mused to the class, well, one day they'll change that to green, and when there's an actual error, it'll be red. And they finally did. So, <laughs> so no errors? Uh, anyone got any errors? <clears throat> OK, so we need to do two things here. Um, number two and number four, and, I, and now I'm going to muse that hopefully one day what they'll do is change the order one, two, then four, then three. Uh, we would test the site after we clean up the site. <clears throat> that would make sense to me. So we'll do number two, which is save permalinks. Well, actually, uh, before we do that, that reminds me. Uh, remember, the permalinks, well, you remind me, what are permalinks again? We've talked about it several times. 
what's one way we could talk about <coughs> permalinks? How oh, you want the URL to show, or you want the numbers? Or exactly, we want the URL to show instead of those numbers. The default WordPress is that we will get my site slash p equals 99, and my site equal uh, p equals 94, instead of my site slash about, or my site slash products. That's what permalinks is. This won't work just yet <clears throat> until we change a little setting on um, on, uh, on WAMP. Remember, we did that. So we'll do it again and make a note here. I don't have it in any of my PDFs yet. It'll be next time. But what we need to do is change a setting in WAMP. So let's go down to your to your menu down here. Show hidden icons. Your double arrow. Click it. You should see the W again, the WAMP server icon. Click that once. And then we'll go to the section of uh, Apache. So Apache, PHP, and MySQL are the underlying foundations that make this virtual server work. We need to change one of the settings of the Apache system. A little Apache. And then we will go to Apache modules. All of these modules are active, and all of them help us but one that would help us is not active. So from this list, you want to scroll down all the way to the, it's alphabetical, so all the way to the R's for rewrite module. Scroll down. This is something that I've noticed when working with PHP my admin with WAMP server, I mean, with WAMP server. Um, that this is not on. But in the real world, most likely you never have to do this when you have your GoDaddy site or your Bluehost or whatever server you've bought. Usually they've already activated that for you. It's, a, it's an important thing nowadays, so I don't know why WAMP server does not have that active. Maybe in the next version they'll have it active. But what we need to do is turn this on before we can turn, before we can do what we were about to do. So click on Rewrite Module, and then everything closes. That's fine. You don't get any feedback. If you want to confirm if it worked, go back to the same screen. Back to the W, back to Apache, back to Modules, and back to Rewrite Module. And if there's a check mark on it, then it worked. There it is. So did everyone activate their Rewrite Module? What does it do? Well, technically it allows this, what we're about to, about to set up. It allows us to rewrite the way we can make our addresses. By default, our address will be p equals 21 instead of about us .html or, or whatever. <clears throat> so we activate that. So let's say we activate it first, and then we go back to the installer here, and now we'll click on Save Permalinks. That opens a new tab. <clears throat> Notice we have the original duplicator tab and our new login tab. And here, since we're still using my site, we'll use my login. So username is admin, and then I'll, I'll write it up here, but then the password is happy cat. Lowercase, no spaces, happy cat. log in, and that takes us to this screen, permalink settings, which is in the settings screen, if you want to find it again in the future. Under settings, permalinks, the default is the, the ugly name, the name that comes from the database. Everything in the database has an identifier, so it's just going to display your content as that identifier. And that's not good for SEO, and it's not good for modern web WordPress sites. It looks amateurish. Whenever I'm looking at a, at a WordPress site, I know 100% that it's a WordPress site because the address looks like a WordPress site, the default one. What you want is a better scheme, and the one I recommend is the post name. Then it'll be the name of your site slash the name of your post. And that's better for SEO. That's better for the search engines, Bing, Yahoo, Google, because when they search the, the web and they find your site that says how to make my own organic soap at home. 
if that's the name of your page and that's what someone is searching for on Google, you have more of a chance of being found instead of your page being called, you know, uh, victorsorganics.com slash p99 instead of victorsorganics slash how to make organic soap. That's why we want to select post name. And then save. Save changes. At the top it should tell you permalink structure updated. So did everyone change their permalink settings? We also select the default, right? No, we want to select post name. So post name will give us better results. Okay, so once we're done with this screen, remember we've got two tabs up here. Close your current tab so that it takes you back to the duplicator screen. So we did number two. And then as I said, I, I hope in the next version they put number four as number three because I would clean this up and then test the site. Um, so let's click number four, clean file cleanup. What this does is it removes and then this confirms, click OK. What this does is it deletes the, uh, the files that we had copied from my network folder, all of the installation files. Uh, notice it says it's going to delete the installer PHP file, it's going to delete the zip file with everything else, it's going to delete a, a log file, the, the, the SQL database data, and a backup PHP file that does something. It's going to clean that up because if you don't clean that up and you're working on your site and next month you decide to come back to that to that um, installer.php file and you never deleted it, you could accidentally remove or delete everything you worked on that whole month. So by cleaning up the duplicator installation files, you won't accidentally erase everything back to the point where you resurrected it. All right, so um, I did step two and four, and step three is just to test the site. But I'm going to close the other tab, the word, the duplicator tab. I'm kind of done with that for the moment. So close the duplicator tab so we stay within your site. Does anyone have a pen I could borrow? This one is really terrible. Thank you. All right, so um, let's look at something here that I mentioned last time, and then we'll talk about the child theme. Um, I had said previously about there are a few tips that I recommend when you set up your site for real to help you guard against someone breaking into your site. Uh, one of the things was, which is a little more advanced, we'll do a little later, which is um, changing the default place where our WordPress is installed to. Because at the moment, remember I said that you can always access your site by going to localhost slash wp4 slash wp-admin. That address always takes you to the login screen. So if I've got victorsbakery.com on, on the actual internet, and I go to victorsbakery.com slash wp-admin, which is the default that WordPress sets up, it will go to my login screen. So that means that people could try to guess what's the login if they know what, where the front door is at to log in. A better solution is to have something, well, let me write it like this. So let's say I do have victor.com. If this was a default WordPress installation, then it would be like that. Well, you're inviting people to the front door and they could try to break into your site. A better solution would be something like victor.com slash mylogin slash wpadmin. No one's going to know that there is this you know, extra layer of, of, of organization 
that then the person can get into the login screen, except you, because I'll show you how to set that up. So this is a much more secure type of scheme. The default is not this. Perhaps in the future, WordPress will, will, will help us out by making that one of the installation screens that says, where would you like to install the, the WordPress login screen? The default is right here. Everyone can see it, and I recommend that. If you have some, if you know that someone's site is WordPress, you know, try to go to wp-admin and you'll probably get the login screen because this is not a commonly done precaution, but I'm teaching you about it because it's highly recommended. And Victor, if you already have a site built but someone else is built, can you still get in to change this? You can. Okay. What we're going to talk about will, will, will show us how to do that. Okay. Question. Same question. Would Same it be question. through PHP admin or through WordPress? This is going to be something that we should edit uh, in the actual server, in the FTP server or the file manager. Like I said, we'll do it together. But it's remember when we were working with changing our child theme and we went into the actual WAMP folder, WW folder, WP folder, and we did stuff in the in the file manager. This is where we would do that also to fix that login issue, which we'll do together. So that's something we'll do later. Keep keep that in mind, but uh, we'll want to give WordPress its own its own uh, folder. And if you want to start previewing it, all the instructions that I'm going to talk about come from the WordPress documentation. If you do a Google search. Um, giving WordPress its own directory. If you search for those keywords exactly, the first result should be straight from WordPress, from the codex. Remember, the WordPress codex is the WordPress manual. And that's what we're going to follow. We'll do it together, but you can start looking at it yourself. And if you search for giving WordPress its own directory, that's the instructions. So make a note of that. That's one of the things we want to do to be more secure. The other thing is perhaps not to use the most commonly, lo commonly used login name, which is what we did. We're using admin. And just for the purposes of uh, you know, working with WordPress and seeing how, how it works and all of that, we used admin. It's recommended not to use admin as our login screen. So let's address that. that one's a, we can, that's a little more tangible at the moment. We don't want to use admin as our login screen, as our user login. So um, on the left side, we have users. Let's, uh, let's click users or go to all users. There's only one at the moment. But here you can create multiple types of users. And notice it has the username, which is what we were using to log in, admin and happy cat. And then uh, a name, uh, this is another name, a, a friendly name, because right now by default, if someone goes to the site and it says this post was made by admin, it, we could change that to say this post was made by Victor. This name is the friendly name. There's nothing there yet, but we can change it. Email address, we're using my fake email address here, and uh, we can change that in a moment. And then we've got role. So we have several roles that we can deal with or that we can set up um, our users to. If we look up here under change role to, just to look at what are the possible roles um, from, uh, from bottom to top, or from top to bottom, right here, less powerful, most powerful. So a subscriber is simply someone that can go to the site and click the subscribe button and then they'll get the latest update to your site. They can't do any edits to the site. A level above is contributor where a person can actually create content which is different than author and I have to look up exactly the difference between contributor and author. There's a difference because the two roles exist but I have to look up the exact difference. Editor is someone that can create content, but also approve the content that these two create. When I talk about content, I mean like a blog post. 
uh, you, a, a good tactic for SEO is to have blog content, to have uh, people write blogs once a month or once a week or once a quarter, some content, and that helps your SEO. Well, you can have guest contributors. You can have people that are in your field with an account here to be able to author a blog post, but it doesn't go live automatically because obviously you want to confirm. It was it, it what did it meet my specifications? Was it written well? Um, the editor is able to go in and, and approve those blog posts. The highest level is administrator, which is able to do everything that every other level can do and create users, delete users, change the theme, um, backup via duplicator, all of this complex stuff that we've been doing. So you have these levels. And this is why I like WordPress, because I used to make Dreamweaver sites much more often for, for clients. And they wanted to update their blog or change the logo of the site or the colors or whatever. And it was hard for them to do because they needed to have the Dreamweaver software, number one, which costs a few hundred dollars. And then number two, they need to learn how to use Dreamweaver. So <clears throat> here in WordPress, they don't need the Dream, they don't need the WordPress software. They just go to the login screen and you log in. And then I can set them as, a, as an editor or an author or something, and then the, the boss can go in and add a new blog post, and they will not accidentally destroy the site, because all they have access to is to add blog content or maybe approve blog content, but not the ability to change the time zone or um, change the theme and all of that. So this is how you can give other people access to your site. You just give them roles. And then this will give you a list of all of the content that they've created. And when they talk about posts, I believe it also relates to posts <coughs> and pages. So if someone created an about page or a blog post, this should count here. And I like this screen because you can quickly see, well, who created what? Let's click on that number there, number two, and it'll show you that this user created these, this content. Okay, that's FYI. So we'll go back. What I want to do here is, well, let's look at uh, what, it, what we can do to edit this account. If you hover over the, the admin account that we have set up, hover over and select Edit. So here we have a bunch of settings we'll look at. Every user has this to a degree. Um, visual editor, disable the visual editor when writing. I do not recommend you turn that on. What that does is it turns off the visual editor when we're creating content. Remember, we are able to write a blog post and we have the buttons for bold, italics, heading one, paragraph, etc. That's styling. If we turn this on, it'll turn those buttons off, which means you need to know HTML. There's going to be no way for you to do something bold unless you write the HTML code. So if you're more comfortable in code than pressing pretty buttons, you can turn that on. Most people don't need it. But I do bring it up because sometimes you have a WordPress site set up where you're trying to edit your post and there's no way to style it. People say, well, how? why do you have those buttons to style it and, and my site doesn't? Probably because your, your visual editor is disabled. So if you run into that, you, you turn it off and you'll get the full capabilities. We have some color schemes we can change here, and that simply changes your admin, your dashboard. It doesn't change your theme. It doesn't change your WordPress theme at all. It changes the screen when you're inside of admin. Well, not only does this serve for you to style it yourself with your own, with your own, uh, with your own panache, but I like to do this to set this up for the purpose of reminding me what I'm doing. This is what I mean. I usually work with clients' sites on my own server. I make a copy of their site, put it on my server via duplicator, everything that we've learned, and then I work on it on my site. 
since this is an exact copy of the live site, I might forget, am I on the live site or the testing site? So what I like to do, because the default is black, what I like to do is change to any other color. So when I log in, I remember, oh, I'm not on the live site. The live site is black, because that's the default. And my testing site is purple. And that just simply reminds me that I'm on my testing site. What I also like to do is, if I need to change something on my live site, and, I, and if it's just a quick change on the live site and it would be a waste of time to duplicate it and download it and all of that, I turn on the red theme to remind me, be careful, I'm on the live site. What I'm doing here will be shown live as soon as I click Save. So I like this more as a sort of quick indicator of what version of the site am I working on. If you leave it on default, you'll always know, yeah, I'm on the live site. If I'm on my testing server, maybe I'm using the blue color. If I'm on the live site, but I've got to be careful, I turn it red. You have to remember to turn it back to the color when you're done with it, though. If you have an older version of WordPress, like uh, less than 3.0, um, or maybe early 3.0, um, you, you don't have this exact thing. I think you've only got two options, light and dark. But again, I would use these little indicators so that I know what um, version of the site I'm testing or working on. I'm not going to make any permanent changes. I'll leave it on default, but this is up to you to decide if you want to use this or not. Keyboard shortcuts, enable keyboard shortcuts for comment moderation. I Honestly, I don't really use that, so I can't tell you much about it, but it seems useful. If you turn that on, you'll have some keyboard shortcuts to be able to quickly uh, mark comment as spam or delete it or whatever. You can look at more info. Toolbar, show toolbar when viewing site. What that's saying is that when you're on actual visit site, notice I'm looking at my site, my real site, and I, at the top, I have the omnipresent uh, menu bar up here. If I don't want that on, I can turn that off right there. I would recommend leave it on. Here's the part where it tells us what's our username, what's our, our pretty name, and then the nickname. Notice it does not let us edit usernames. Unfortunately, we cannot edit usernames. Um, we have to do this a, a different way. But what we can do is, is add a name here, like, you know, Victor Campos, the nickname, whatever. And what I said about this post was posted by, we can choose here, admin, first name, last name, full name, nickname, So I bring this up because we will change the default username from admin to anything else because that'll make us more secure. However, sometimes, depending how your WordPress is set up, you don't have the ability to change that. So if you have your display name as something else besides admin, that helps you a little bit in that people won't, might not guess what your login name is. If you keep it on admin, people will We'll, we'll know where's the login screen and what is the login name that I might try to break in with. But if you change that to something else that you fill in here, technically the login name is still admin, but everyone on the site would see that the name is Victor, so they're going to try to break in with Victor, and they're, they're going to fail instead because they don't know that it's admin. Here you can fill in uh, email, which is required, because let's say you forgot your password. You can tell WordPress to remind you of the password, and it'll send an email to that, uh, to that email account to retrieve your password. We're not going to change it just yet. We're going to do something else in a moment. And uh, if, you have these other, if you have these other things, you can fill this in too. Uh, let's say you're working on victorsbakery.com, so you would add that there. It, it, it sort of seems redundant because 
we're assuming our site currently is victorsbakery.com, let's say. But we still want to put that address there. If you've got a Google Plus address, you put that there. If you've got a Twitter, you want to put the Twitter address. If you've got a Facebook, you put the Facebook address. Who's going to see all this? This could show up depending on your theme. I'll show you here. If I'm on the blog, depending on the theme, the blog could say who it was written by. This one doesn't seem to by default. But there could be a blog post that says, okay, pie of the month by Victor. And when a person clicks on that name, Victor, then it'll show up with everything that we've written here. It'll show up a user screen. It'll show up a screen with all of this that we've written, like this biographical info. So if you've got several people contributing to your site, I'm the admin, but I've got a stable of three writers that add to my site every month, it's a good idea to fill this in because then you, you have these people with their own little bio, biographical screen so that um, they, they feel part of, as part of the site. Notice it says, this biographical info may be shown publicly, depending on the theme. Here's where you can change the, um, the password. Remember, my password currently is Happy Cat. We won't change that just yet, but here's where you would ch add your own password. You type it twice, it tells you how good of a password it is. Obviously, you want passwords that are not very weak usually by adding numbers, or just make it longer. And this one's pretty weak because I put password in the password and that's not good. Let's say I'm making it up here. It's pretty stringent. So longer passwords are better because then it'll say it's stronger. This is something that doesn't show up by default, but we've got this little section of, 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 of settings because we've previously installed the SEO plugin, Yoast's SEO plugin. And so Yoast is going to add several extra SEO features for you throughout the site. One of them is here title to use for author page, meta description to use for author page, and exclude from author sitemap. What this is saying is, by default, if, if someone does go to the author page, you know, something like Victor's Bakery slash author slash Victor, um, it would have a title and a description that the search engines would see. And usually WordPress is pretty good about taking what it sees that you've written and putting it up there. What I mean is this. Here's the title of this, of this screen, Pie of the Month, Victor's Bakery. If you want that to say something else, because it might say, User Profile Victor Campos, and instead I want it to say About Victor, this is where I would edit it. title to use. I can make it say about Victor. Because the default WordPress might write, uh, you know, user profile Victor. And instead I wanted to say about Victor or all about Victor. When you're saying about Victor and not about Victor's making. Because this is going to be the page about the user Victor. The person that is writing, not the company. <coughs> And then I can also add a description here. Again, this is for the search engines because when you're when you're doing a search, when you're doing a search and you get results, you get this up here. This is the title. That's what we're editing right now. This title. And then the description that appears below here, that's what it's telling us right here. Add a description. <coughs> So if you want to edit both of those, that's where you edit it at. And then don't worry about exclude user from author sitemap just yet. 
<clears throat> we made a couple of changes here, so uh, just to remind you, don't change the password yet. You can change other things if you want, but don't change the password yet. And click, sa uh, click Update Profile. So what I was showing you here that this is the screen where we would edit an existing profile. And getting back to the original issue is we don't want to have the default admin as the name of our account to log in because that makes us less secure. And since this does not allow us to edit it, what we need to do is create a new account. So that's what we'll do, then we'll take a break soon. We want to create a new account, which will be our brand new administrator, with a different name so that people don't guess our, our login our, our login um, credentials. So let's talk about creating a new user. On the left side here, click Add New. So Add New User. It's got a bunch of stuff to fill in. We'll fill it in in a moment, but before we do that, because it's very easy to forget, the first thing I want to do is at the very bottom change the, change, change the role to administrator. Because by default it'll be subscriber and it'll be the weakest type of account to have. It won't let you change the theme, it won't let you change the name of the site, it won't let you add content. So first let's go to the bottom and select administrator. And then at the top, we'll start filling this in. And there's really only a couple of required fields, username and email. So again, this is now up to you, and I'll give you, uh, I'll give you a suggestion in a moment. This is up to you now to decide a, a username for your administrator password. We were all the time using admin, and again, that's not secure because everyone uses admin. You don't want to be like everyone. So what you could do um, is, you know, you could put your name. That's also still less secure because people could research who you are and try to log in with your name. So it would be better to sort of pick a, an esoteric name that you would think most people wouldn't really know, but that you would remember or that you write down somewhere. So one thing that you could do is um, uh, you could have, for example, um, ADM which is my shorthand for administrator, and then the name of the user, maybe also initials. Who's ever going to figure that out, that that's the login name? So again, that whatever... Is this is not case sensitive, actually, in this case. No, this is not case sensitive. So here you can write whatever you want, but perhaps, you know, something like log for LG, login, log, whatever, and then your name. something, something that will uh, not be as common as, as uh, admin. And it can look ugly, that's fine, because remember, we've got, we've got um, a space over here for nickname where we can put the pretty name. Here then you want to add your email address. Put your email address and then uh, fill this in for real. The name of the person that has this account. And then here you can make up your own password. Let me help you with that. It has a very specific... No. 
So you want to make up a password, because we're going to use my account again next time. I'll just use the same password, happy cat. This is case sensitive. So on this password, it, it is case sensitive, and that's how you can get a that's how you can get a better password so that it's not weak if you put capital letters and numbers and such. But I'm just gonna go with happy cat. It'll tell you if it matches. And then the cool thing is that you can turn on send this password to the new user by email. So if you forget it, turn that on and it's going to send you an email so you can have it in your records. So we change the password to the new one? Or we just stick to the happy This is up to you. I would recommend, um, you know, if you change it, write it down because you're going to log in with it. So once you set that up, go ahead and click Add New User. Add New User, and then you get this screen. It takes you back to the list of all users, and there is the admin user, uh, the old one, and then the new one. That, did that work for everyone? Did you create a new account? A new user? All right, so... We're, we're almost there. We created the new the new user account, and but the old one still exists. So again, the whole point of this is to create a new username that not everyone will be able to easily guess. So we want to delete the old name, but we don't want to delete the old name while we're still logged into it. Right, so here's what we'll do. Close your web browser completely. You don't have to log out, that's fine. Just to the requirements or we should put that apply button. Uh, yes, you should have clicked uh, apply or save or whatever it said down there. Log out. You can log out if you want, but uh, I'm just going to simply close the web browser completely. All right, so close the web browser completely. We were in Firefox. We're going to go to a different web browser. I'm going to open Safari. Anything else you want besides Firefox. Just to the just to confirm that we're logging in from scratch. I'm in Safari. We're gonna go back to the login screen. HTTP colon slash slash localhost slash wp4 slash wp dash admin. Remember later we'll change that login screen. That's more complicated, but it still is there. So we'll go back to the login screen and now log in with the brand new account you just created. What is it? I don't know. You just created it. So localhost slash wp4 slash wp dash admin. So the brand new username you just created. Remember, it's not case sensitive brand new password. Another reason why you might want to change the color of the user account, we'll, we'll see that in a moment, is because you might have a, you might accidentally, well what, what did I log, what account did I log in with? If they have different color schemes, you should be able to tell which account you've logged in with. So I've logged in with my brand new account. Let's go over to Users. And we'll talk about, okay, well, we've got this brand new account. That's the one that's more secure than admin. 
So we want to delete the old admin account. Go to users, hover over admin. Let's select delete. So it's going to say you've specified to delete user ID number one admin. What should be done with content owned by this user? Remember, the admin user created a couple of pages, and it wants you, and, it want, and it's asking you, well, what do you want to do with the stuff that that user created? We've got delete it all, or attribute it or assign it to the account we're going to keep. That makes sense, doesn't it? Why would we delete that content just because we deleted the user? But you could delete the content of the user if, like, let's say this you had you had hired this blog writer and they, they wrote some blogs for you, but then you you fired them. So you fired them, you take away their access on WordPress, and maybe you don't want their blog content there anymore because they went to your rival. So you can delete their content. But I'm going to say let's attribute it to the, the new user account because we want to keep that content. So I'm going to select Confirm Deletion. There we go. So now we've got uh, the more secure, the, um, a more secure setup. We don't have the default admin name. We have our own name here, which will make it harder for people to, to guess. Have uh, hovered over like admin, wp admin, and edited that. Where exactly? Um, under the user that we had that was called admin. Uh huh. And then. And, then, and then, then edit. Yeah, but remember, as we saw here, we cannot edit the the username. Oh, okay. So we have to go around it by creating a new account. It would be nice to, for it to let us do that, but through all the years I've used WordPress, this is a big stumbling block. I want to change the name of my username. We cannot do it. WordPress doesn't allow it. You can do 99% of everything else, but for some reason they don't let you do this. So we need to create a new account, then delete the old account, and that sort of serves the same purpose. All right, so... Um, just about time for a break now. Any general questions, and then we can do some help. I just missed the last step because I have some problems. So you just so I'll, I'll help help you just one more and over here. You can have multiple. Oh, well, you wouldn't have that many, but uh, you can have more than one administrator. You could. As a backup, okay, and they have access to all of your passwords. And yeah. You have access to theirs. They don't have access to know what the password is. They just have access to change the password. Because nowhere here does it list, this is your password. There's the option to change the password. So if another administrator logs into another administrator's account, they will not see their password. Just the ability to change the password. Which is dangerous. Sure, but it's not as dangerous as them seeing what your password is. Because if you use the same password on all your sites, then now they know your password for all your sites. Here, they can change the, your password for this site, but perhaps that's not so bad because that they don't know the, the login for your bank. So if this worked great, let's take a break. If not, call me over and I'll help you out. We'll take a 15-minute break. We'll go until 10.30, and then we will continue. <laughs>